Stable is a term that gets constantly thrown around in the FOSS world. I do it myself. This distro is stable. This software is unstable. This library is stable. So on and so forth. And maybe it's just my comment section, but this seems to lead to a bunch of misunderstandings. Because when you say stable, what are you actually saying? What do you mean by stable? Because stable has two separate technical meanings, both of which are in wide use, and both of which have nothing to do with each other. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to refer to the two versions of stable as stable environment, and stable execution. So let's consider an example. Let's say Debian SID, otherwise known as Debian Unstable. This is how the Debian maintainers describe the project. This is basically the initial development branch of Debian and changes roll in like it's a rolling release. So bug testing and security just may not have been dealt with yet. And if you're gonna use that, Basically, it's all up to you whether it's a good idea or not. So, if we're talking about a stable environment, a stable environment means you have an environment which is consistent. Is this environment constantly changing with lots of updates rolling in, with options changing, APIs changing, package availability changing, or is it an environment where you might get a couple of bug fixes, but ultimately it's pretty much the same for like a year or two years? Well, in the case of Debian SID, this is absolutely not the case. We can very much say that Debian SID has an unstable environment. This is literally the whole purpose of Debian SID existing. It brings in new changes quickly, so these new changes can also be tested quickly. General user software will be changed, kernels will be changed, everything on the system is going to be updated. So SID has an unstable environment, which is why it's generally not suitable for use with something like a web server, for example. Arch, in the same vein, is also an unstable distro because it's constantly getting updates. But an unstable environment doesn't necessarily mean unstable execution. So when discussing stable execution, what we are referring to is whether the software basically does what is expected of it. Is the software crashing a lot? Does it have a bunch of bugs? Is the output kind of inconsistent? So if you take some sort of input into the application and then you refactor it into another form that should be the exact same output, is the output like it should be? Or a options not working like they should, and maybe just throwing things out that don't make any sense. Can you trust this software in a production environment? So if you're in a situation where you're going to deploy it to an entire fleet of computers, is that software something you would actually want to do that with? And when we're talking about a whole distribution, it's a bit harder to answer that question because we're not talking about a single project. There are parts of SID which, for certain updates, might be buggy. Maybe it rolls in a buggy version of Firefox, or a buggy version of Systemd, or a buggy version of the kernel. For those individual things, sure, it might be a unstable execution. But unless we're talking about a core package like the kernel, like your init system, things like that, I think it's generally fair to say that the execution is mostly stable. And listening to people who say they daily drive SID, that seems to be pretty much the experience that I hear. So in the SID case, we have an unstable environment with a stable execution, but it's not like this is the only way it can be. These things don't have anything to do with each other, so you can have both things being stable, both things being unstable. Let's take something like Ubuntu LTS, for example. Generally, you would say that Ubuntu LTS has a stable environment because this is sort of the point of it being an LTS release. While it gets the security patches and bug fixes and things like that, when it comes to major feature set changes, these don't change. So if you go and download something like I don't know, uh, 20.04 LTS or 22.04 LTS. This is going to be pretty much the same environment now as in two or three years from now. It's going to have those fixes, but if you write something with Ubuntu LTS in mind, 
it's going to keep working the same way until the next version of Ubuntu LTS comes out. The next major changes is going to be with the release of 24.04 and then 26.04 and so on and so forth. And for the most part, you would say it has a stable execution. I say for the most part because 22.04 does have a couple of um, RAM-related crashing issues. And RAM being a fairly fundamental part of your system, when things go wrong there, it's going to go really bad everywhere else as well. But if we're talking about most other releases, you use an Ubuntu LTS release in production. You might go and deploy it to like a thousand web servers and then use it to run some like big tech website. This is a great use for it because both its environment and also its execution are stable. But on the flip side, you can have some early alpha software that is still highly being developed. So it's alpha software. It's probably going to be pretty buggy. It might crash. It's going to have some bugs. Maybe the output's inconsistent. And also because it's alpha software, you probably don't have a lot of things finalized. So if you have an API, for example, that API might still be going through a lot of changes. So if you want to build something with that project in mind, that's going to be pretty difficult to do and know if it's actually going to keep working going into the future. So it has both an unstable execution and also an unstable environment. So the next time that someone says that Arch is a stable distro, it probably doesn't mean that it has a stable environment. If someone is talking about alpha software like Olive 0.1, they probably don't mean that it has a stable execution. But as we've seen from some of these examples, there are plenty of cases where things can be mixed and matched depending on what that specific case is going to be. So before having an argument about whether something is actually stable, Ensure that you know what both of you are actually talking about. Are we talking about a stable environment or are we talking about stable execution? Because I've seen so many discussions where people are basically just talking past each other because they are both right. One of them is talking about a stable environment saying it's not stable. The other person is talking about a stable execution saying it is and no reasonable discussion is actually happening. Obviously, obviously, if you both know what you're talking about, don't worry about it. But if it's with random people, make sure that you're both on the same page. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is important? Do you think stable should just mean one or the other? What do you think? And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting barrel pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And...